Odoyo followers, my name is Kevin Hopkinson and I work with Acton Software as part of their email deliverability team. And today I would like to discuss with you a rudimentary process that each center needs to have employed when distributing their marketing emails. Yes, I'm talking about email authentication. Now authenticating your email sends is the first step to achieving good deliverability rates because it is, well, arguably the most important step. The email industry has historically experienced considerable abuse at the hands of spammers over the years, so the ISPs take sender identity extremely serious. Authentication is used to block harmful or fraudulent uses of emails such as phishing, spamming, spoofing attacks. Uh, industry practitioners use the term email authentication to refer to these technical standards and make uh, you know that make verification possible. The most commonly used email authentication standards are SPF, DKIM, uh, and DMARC. These standards are what the industry look at to uh, determine proof of identity when using publicly viewable DNS records. So let me go ahead and explain to you uh, what those three um, uh, methods of verification are. Now SPF, or Center Policy Framework, is the most basic form of sender authentication. And it's widely adopted and is pretty much considered a cornerstone of every sender's identity and reputation. Right? So this is usually the first form of authentication a filter will check for, right? And involves the email provider gathering the return path domain. Uh, it's also called the uh, um, envelope domain. Uh, and then matching that IP uh, tied to that domain against uh, you know, the published, DN uh, published DNS record for SPF. If there's a match, voila, you have a pass with SPF check. Now. If the sender chooses not to publish an SPF record, well, oftentimes senders do that. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why, but they do. It's basically telling the whole world that you're okay with whoever wants to send email from this particular domain. Um, I wouldn't advise it, but uh, you know, it's, it's something that, that you should definitely be on top of. This, uh, this just makes it much easier for uh, malicious actors to spoof the sender. Uh, it also prevents legitimate sender from, you know, using other more specific authentication methods such as like DMARC. Next is DKIM or Domain Key Identified Mail. This is an important authentication protocol that looks back to an email sender's domain to determine if the sender is, well, again, really who they say they are. The domain key itself is a specialized key that can be used by only one particular sender. So it, does, so it does go a long way to reassure the recipient uh, that the message is, well, in fact, legitimate and it's not fake. The use of domain keys is yet, well, another form of email authentication is probably the most widely used form of authentication that, that allows an organization to claim responsibility for a message in a way that can be validated by the recipient. Without it, your emails will fail and the DKIM authentication check was likely, you know, the outcome is likely going to be a junk folder placement. This is DMARC, which means Domain Message Authentication Reporting and Conformance. Now, DMARC is supposed to have a really big year in 2018 with more email providers than ever beginning to pay close attention uh, to its deployment and use. This is, again, just another form of authentication through published DNS records. But DMARC also allows senders and receivers to report on domains that may be sending fraudulent mail. The caveat, however, to DMARC, uh, you know, authenticating with DMARC is, of course, it's also dependent on the alignment of DKIM and SPF, right? So those need to verify first, and then DMARC will pass. Uh, to email providers, this added letter, layer of protection uh, helps even further confirm that the message is indeed authentic. Now it's easy to generate a DMARC record that will pass. Just about anybody can do it. However, the result will mean the frequent uh, generation of these flat XML report files uh, created as a result and subsequently they'll be delivered to the, any email noted within the published DMARC record itself. So if you would like to make sense of those flat files then you want to employ a third-party DMARC service that can at least process that information, something like maybe DMartian uh, 250 OK. 
that can work. So using these email authentication methods along with having good sender reputation and good engagement will bring you closer to realizing what we call the deliverability trifecta. This puts uh, in a much better position for your deliverability success and ultimately obtaining ROI. It also makes it harder for the bad guys to imitate you, which makes more likely that your email is welcomed by the gatekeepers. So uh, thanks for joining me today uh, to discuss email authentication basics. I hope you have a good day, everybody.